In this video, I'll go over connecting an Android device, specifically my Samsung Galaxy Tab A7 running Android 11, to an L2TP IPsec, OpenVPN, and WireGuard VPN running on the Synology NAS. I'll also leave a few links to videos that I've created that cover setting up those VPN services on a Synology NAS in the description below, as well as a link to the iOS version of this video if you are also an iOS user. I'll start off with setting up an L2TP IPsec VPN connection, but note that Samsung's user interface is slightly different from stock Android, so you may need to go through a different set of screens if you're not a Samsung user. I'll leave a link to Synology's knowledge base article on how to connect to Synology's VPN servers via an Android device in the description below if you'd like to view their steps where they're using a Google Pixel 3 running Android 10 in their instructions. For my Samsung Galaxy Tab A7, I'll need to go to Settings, make sure Connections is selected, then select the More Connection Settings, then VPN. From here, I'll tap the menu in the upper right corner of the screen, then select Add VPN Profile. This brings up the Edit VPN Network window, where I'll enter in a name for the VPN connection. For type, I'll select L2TP IPsec PSK. For server address, I'll enter in the DDNS hostname that I set up for my Synology NAS that is running the L2TP IPsec service. L2TP secret and IPsec identifier aren't used, so I'll skip those and enter in the IPsec pre-shared key that was entered in when configuring the VPN. I'll then enter in the username and password for the connection, then tap Save. Now I'll select the newly created L2TP IPsec connection to bring up this window and click Connect to establish the VPN connection. Once the status changes to Connected, I'll tap on the L2TP IPsec listing again to get additional connection information from this window here, confirming further that the L2TP IPsec VPN connection to the Synology NAS is working. For OpenVPN, we'll need to export the OpenVPN configuration zip file that we can download from the VPN server package within DSM. We'll then need to extract the archive and edit the configuration file to our individual setup. I covered these steps in my OpenVPN video, so I won't repeat the steps here, but for your reference, I'll link to the specific timecode in that video where I covered downloading and editing the OpenVPN configuration file in the description below. After editing the OpenVPN configuration file, we'll need to save it to the Android device we'd like to set up, and I'll use Synology Drive's web portal to copy the file over. I've already copied the file to Synology Drive on my MacBook, so now on my Samsung Galaxy device, I'll log into the web portal and download the configuration file. Next, we'll need to install the OpenVPN Connect app from the Play Store and launch the application. We'll then come up to this Import Profile screen where we'll need to tap on the File tab. Here, we need to tap on Allow to give OpenVPN Connect access to the files on the device, navigate to the Download folder, and now we should see the OpenVPN configuration file that was just downloaded. I'll tap on the file, then select Import and after the file is imported, we'll be able to update the profile name. Enter in the OpenVPN username, and if you would like to, tap the Save Password box and enter in the user's password to save it as well. Next, I'll click Add, then Not Now, on this Save Password to Google window to complete the setup. Then I'll toggle on the newly created connection, select OK on this Connection Request window, and if everything was entered correctly, I'll be connected to the OpenVPN service running on the Synology NAS. For WireGuard, we'll need to SSH into the Synology NAS running the service and bring up the WireGuard configuration file. This would be the Etsy WireGuard wg0.conf file if you followed the steps in my WireGuard setup video. 
Here we'll need to set up a peer for the Android device that we'll be setting up and I already started by adding an IP address for the device on the Allowed IPs line. Next, from my Samsung Galaxy tab, I've installed the WireGuard app from the Play Store and I'll go ahead and open the app as well. Once running, I'll tap on the plus sign and select Create from Scratch to bring up the Create WireGuard tunnel screen. Here, I'll enter in a name for the WireGuard connection, then tap on the icon to the far right of the private key field to generate the client's public and private keys. Next, I'll copy the public key and send it to my MacBook, or I'll paste it into the public key line in the server configuration for the peer that I'm adding. Note that I use text messaging between the tablet and my MacBook to transfer the public key. For addresses, I'll enter in the IP address from the peer section I added earlier on the server. Nothing needs to be entered for either the listen port or MTU. For DNS servers, enter in one that you'd like to use, and in my case, I run a local DNS server, so I'll enter in that information here. Next, I'll click Add Peer, and now I'll need to copy the public key from the server to the Android device. So back on the server, I'll save the changes and exit out of the editor. Then I'll cat the server's public key, copy it, and text it to my Samsung tablet. Next, I'll copy and paste the public key into the peer public key section on the device. I'll then enter in the endpoint information, which is the DDNS hostname and port configured for the setup, and the allowed IPs, which I'll set to 0.0.0.0/0 for a full tunneling VPN connection and click save. The last thing to do is stop and start the WireGuard service on the Synology NAS. Now, back on my Samsung Galaxy tab, I'll toggle the new WireGuard connection on and if everything was set up successfully, I'll be connected to WireGuard running on the Synology NAS. I hope this video helped you connect your Android device to either an L2 TP IPsec, OpenVPN, or WireGuard VPN running on your Synology NAS. And if it did, make sure to like this video. Also, if you found this video informative, consider subscribing to this channel. And if you have the means, support my work by checking out the options available in the support this channel section in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.